is Sarah Eberhard, and I am interviewing Joseph W. Hatch at the Atlanta History Center on June 1st, 2005. I could get you to state your name and date of birth, please. <clears throat> Joseph W. Hatch, Jr., 5-26-16. Okay. Um, just to get just to get started here, I'll let you um, tell a little bit about prior to, to going into the service. What was your situation? Were you working in school or? Uh, well, I'd uh, I'd been through college and been at, uh, had my MBA at Wharton, and I just gotten out in well in about June of fourth, just a little before the war, and I worked for the uh, a casualty company, and. Um, we were just exploring different possibilities in the casualty field. And then the war came along, and the uh, draft was in, as you may recall, in the fall of 40. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, had, uh, well, there were two really schools of thought at that time. Mm -hmm. Some people said, well, let's get this war behind us and just take, the, take it and get out. And, and I had a friend of mine that I had known at Horton. And he said, Joe, we're already in the war. We're at least land, we're financing the war right now. We haven't committed any bodies to the war yet, but it's just a matter of time and some event. And this was before Pearl Harbor, you see. At some event, and we just kick it off. So we said, I would suggest that you uh, explore right now and move right now. And uh, so he sent me to some people that were. Uh, or recruiting, I guess, for the war, you'd say. And uh, I had already learned to fly, so my natural impulse was to join the Air Corps. So I went in there and they said, well, we're, Mr. Hatch, we're taking boys in the Air Corps with only two years of college. You've got four and two years of graduate school. And we've got some other things that we really are trying to fill and we'd like you to consider them. And so I was open to that, of course, and they said, well, what we're really looking for now is somebody in the area of logistics. Well, I didn't know what that word meant. <clears throat> but uh, they explored a little further and they said, well, what we're talking about really is, in, is a Navy, uh, Navy connection. And uh, what it really turned out to be was the Navy amphibious. And uh, the uh, logistics were getting <clears throat> guns and heavy tanks into these landing boats and getting them on the beaches. And that was really what the logistical part of it was. And uh, that's what we did uh, uh, during the war. We, we worked with the LSTs. The LSTs were a landing ship tank. And they can go right into the beach, but they take a lot of water. Now our ship that I happened to draw was an AKA, which is an attack uh, attack uh, um, cargo ship, and we had 36, uh, 36 uh, uh, LCCs, these landing crafts, and we would put these over the side of the ship and into these boats, and then they would go individually to the beach, their big advantage being that they only took one or two feet of water, so they could go in almost anywhere, wherever the LSC was limited, to high tide, or shit star beach. And of course, if you think about it, many, many beaches are very shallow, very far out. And uh, well, that's really what we did. What we did. And that was our mission all through the war. And uh, we were called on uh, often when they couldn't get the LSTs in and back out. Now, where was the, um, where did your initial training take place over here when, when you first went in? Was that, uh, on the East Coast here, and then. Well, I was at the. Uh, my first. I was at, I was in, I got, had gotten my commission uh -huh. before Pearl Harbor. Okay. And uh, uh, I guess I got it about April of, uh, of 41. Uh -huh. And then, of course, Pearl Harbor came along, and that uh -huh. just sort of changed everything uh -huh. for everybody. And they put me in a training session uh -huh. for trying to prepare people. Uh, for, the, for the military, in a very general broad way. I was trained, in, when I was there in Norfolk, I was trained in every direction imaginable. And I sometimes took exception to it. I was trained in uh, gunnery. That wasn't my line, wasn't involved with what I was
was trying to do it all. Um, I was trained in, in, in uh, uh, all sorts of chemical warfare. In fact, any kind of training that came along, this captain said, well, you don't know where you're going to end up in this war. So I want you to train in every direction you can. So I was trained beyond almost limits in that direction. Now, when was the first time that you, like, what time did you leave the States for? Oh, for when, when did I go on my ship? Yeah. When, well, let's see, I was, uh, we, we made the invasion in, 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 in Sicily in, in June of 43, and I was on there about three or four months before that. I guess about April okay. of 43. And then there was, a, what did I say, the first one was, a, uh, the first one was, it was a Sicily, and then Salerno, Italy, mm -hmm. which they gave us a real hard time on me because of the fact that this was the first penetration, really, of the continent of Europe, you see. Mm -hmm. And then later, the next year, of course, was, uh, was, was 40, which was... Uh, um, now, as uh, as you got overseas, what was your uh, communication back back home like? Did your uh, family and and friends uh, was there? Yeah, we got a lot of letters. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, finally we got to, through that last invasion of it, and I, and I came home and and I had orders to get off the ship. Short of you, I was typical when you served in a combat situation, you usually were given uh, what they call, you know, a short, short, short of me. And uh, so about, based on that, my wife and I got married. And then what happened was that this relief of mine came aboard, and uh, he turned out, as I said before, turned out to be a Christian scientist, uh, refused all medical attention, and died. So they sent me to the Pacific, to the Pacific, with the assurance that I have a relief waiting for me when I got to, got to Panama. But I knew that, well, I was deaf about that, because uh, I knew this fellow had known him a little bit before, and I knew he wasn't going to be in any hurry to get there. <laughs> and he wasn't. So we sailed from there, and uh, we then caught Lady Gulf. Uh, Lady Gulf was an operation in the Philippines and one of the D-Days and uh, then the next one was Okinawa and Okinawa my experience was totally different than it had been anywhere else. We were trying to get into Okinawa and they were throwing at us uh, kamikazes, people that weren't going to come back but were trying to take somebody with them. And, uh, I don't know how accurate this is, but the story was that they, they sent 3,700 of those planes at the fleet as we were trying to get it open out. And uh, I didn't really think we were going to ever make that because they just kept, kept coming so uh, continually. We had to abandon even all semblance of normal Navy procedure. No, Navy procedure. Normally when you attack, you go to your battles again. <coughs> well, they were so constant that we weren't getting any sleep at all. So we said, well, the heck with this. We'll stand, we'll have one eight-hour watch, which will be our battle station. We'll have an eight-hour watch, which will be our professional time, if you were a baker or I was a baker yeah. job. Um, and then we'll have another for our personal time. That'll be our sleep and eating. And that's what we did. Or we'd never gotten through it. Now, how long did that go on, the constant... Uh well, see, I guess that was about 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 a, six weeks till we got to Okinawa, and then of course when we got to Okinawa. I, <clears throat> it was a it was always a very difficult situation there, and uh, we were planning to see a, uh, an invasion of, of Japan, but then they did a thing that I've never regretted, but a lot of people think is the wrong thing. They dropped the atomic bomb, mm -hmm. and that was it. But they did one thing, and I was disappointed. They dropped a second atomic bomb, mm -hmm. and I really never saw the purpose of that, because they caved in. Mm -hmm. And, of course, as, as I know I've learned from talking to other people, you had no idea that that was coming. There. The atomic bomb? Right. No. Uh, but we 
were very thankful for. It. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know I talked to, to one gentleman who was, um, he was a pilot, and he was actually coming back from a run. Yeah. And, because uh, I asked him, did he have any any knowledge, and he was coming back from a run, and, and he said all of a sudden, he, they were all relaxed, they were having their dinner, yeah. and, and they just did it with a jolt that threw them all up yeah. against the, the plane, yeah. and that's what it was. Yeah. And uh, so was it, he about? Yeah. yeah. And uh, he was that close to where it happened, but had no... Uh, but it was going to be a terrible situation there. Uh, they had already briefed us <clears throat> on what our next step was, which was to invade it. And uh, it was to be in March of uh, the following year. This was 45, I think. But in March of 46, we were to, to go in there. And uh, it's tough to think of what it would be like. Now, as... Um Going back to when you first went into Italy, were you with the same group throughout? I was in the amphibious all the way, and I was on this one ship all the way. I served longer and saw more D-Days right. because of what happened in my relief, you see. Right. Because he was perfectly competent in that respect, but mm -hmm. it was a very basic part of the job of getting these guns to hit the beach, and uh, uh, they just had to, had to continue with it. How, um, I did hear funny when on that. <clears throat> when we got all through this, and of course we thought we'd been putting our life on the line, and uh, we're taking all the credit, I guess, in our own mind for this. <clears throat> and uh, this intelligence officer came aboard the ship, and he said, "He said, you know, you men were safer than if you'd been home chasing women." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we were, you know, we just uh, I said, "Well, let me show you." Now, just follow me really quickly. He said, we were protecting you completely because you were what we had to have, but you were, you saw a lot of 88s. That was a German big gun. But the, you know, they never quite reached it, did they? You were out of their range. You were worried about the submarine threat, and you didn't know it, but we'd already broken the submarine code the previous fall, so that wasn't a threat to you. And we gave you the best aircraft coverage that anybody ever had. So really, you weren't in any danger at all. And that was really turned out to be true. Wow. It's really true. But sometimes you think, you know, that you're in a situation that you really aren't. But the reason was that they needed specifically what we had. And that was the guns and the tanks. Because they couldn't sustain these beachheads without them. Now, as, as you, because you were involved in three of these in, in Europe then. Right. Three in Europe, yeah. How, how did each? Well, I was involved a little. I'm not sure that I got an ID day on that, but we also invaded, invaded North, North Africa. That's how I got in oh. there. So, how, how did each one of those um, progress? Did they seem to get easier? Was there more tension at any one? What were like, uh, you know, psychologically, how did, did well, they get Well, I worse with the Pacific. Yeah. Uh, Actually, as this guy said, we weren't in any real danger. We just thought we were. But when you got to the Pacific, you had just a whole different situation. Lady Gulf, for example, was a crazy situation. We were, we got in real late into Lady Gulf. Actually. We got our battle star for it and our D-Day star for it. <clears throat> but and I don't know the circumstances, and I can't even prove that any of this is right. <clears throat> but there. At D-Day there, the Japanese had moved in a major battleship and had trained on our small little base that was there <coughs> at, uh, at Lady. And had us completely, completely at his control. And suddenly, he got left. <laughs> and I don't know this, I don't know why or anything about this. I can't explain that at all. But he just departed. And we were, of course, very happy mm -hmm. about that. <laughs> and and once the once the bomb was dropped, and, and you had how much longer did you have? Did you stay in the area? Did you come back pretty quickly? Or well, I got a very unpopular job. And I got back and expected to get off, you know, immediately because I really I had lots of points in every direction mm -hmm. that you want to hear about it. But the. Uh, Admiral in charge of the area. 
said, Joe, I got a very unpopular job for you. He said, uh, we've got a lot of personnel that have done a wonderful job in this war, particularly flyers. And they, but they've never had another job. And they, 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 they said, now they're going to get out. They had no job experience at all. And I didn't have a lot, but I had a year or two. And uh, uh, your, your job is to go in and be, be sure that they sign their departure papers. And, they on. and uh, it was very unpleasant because, you know, I, some of these guys I'd known and, and they're flying and so forth. And, uh, but they, they were in a situation. They had a job. Some of them were commanders. I was lieutenant commander when I got out. And uh, some of them were senior you know, to me. <clears throat> and they had never done a stroke of civilian work. So this was an awfully daunting mm -hmm. thing to them. And some of them did have a hard time. And I remember trying to help some of them out mm -hmm. well, with different things. I had still had some pretty good contacts in the business world, you see. But that was my ending job. And, uh, that was back over here? Oh, well, yeah. In, in Norfolk? That, that was in Norfolk. Okay. okay. That was in Norfolk. Mm -hmm. and, uh, now, did a lot of them end up taking advantage of going back to school, or did they do different things? Oh, of course, uh, that did come along. Um, yeah. we, had, we had very good. Of course, a lot of them didn't want to. They, were, you know, they didn't want to go back to school. They, yeah. they had very responsible and mm -hmm. served their country well and yeah. accomplished a great deal. And some of you, that was, of course, a, the major thing that many of them did end up <clears throat> going back and getting some more education. That was the thing for them to do. That's why I kept telling them, mm -hmm. get as much education as you can. Because yeah. it may not be as important as people think it is, mm -hmm. which it is often the case. So, uh, then did you, how, how long did you... Well, I was only in, I was extended until, I guess, three or four months. And then did you yeah. go back into doing what you were doing before, when uh, career-wise, after you? No, I had run into a guy mm -hmm. <coughs> with Colonial Stores, and he said, uh, Joe, uh, what we're getting ready to do is we're trying to decide where this company should go in the future, where the warehouses should be. and." Uh, of where we should put our concentration, and should we move in, we don't been strictly in the south, should we move colonial stores as well into Cincinnati, Columbus, and that area, for which we did, did do. <clears throat> and uh, we want you to to, uh, to to map that out for us. And I, one of the courses that they made me take, you know, when I was, the courses were being assigned to me, was uh, Strategic planning, uh -huh. and they just happened to pick that up. You see, on my uh, resume, that I had this strategic planning, which did did uh, show the location of facilities. Uh -huh. That was just a freak thing, uh -huh. and that was my next job. I mean, that was a, f a fascinating job, of course, uh -huh. and uh, I uh, had full reign to uh, to. Uh, who we ended up with, of course, was Atlanta was some place that we should be. Weren't there yet? Uh, Cincinnati, mm -hmm. Columbus was a place that we should be. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we, we got into most of those places. And then, of course, we moved our headquarters from Norfolk to Atlanta. This is Colonial Stores now. Mm -hmm. Colonial Stores was taken over by, finally, by a &P. Okay. And uh, we moved our headquarters, though while it was still colonial, in 1949, we moved it to Atlanta, and that was the occasion of my getting here. <laughs> okay. And then it's you a curious world. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And so then you, you've been in Atlanta ever ever since then? Yeah, they also said I wouldn't be there long, so oh. <laughs> we'd go ahead and buy a house anyway. Uh -huh. Very good thing I did, because okay. I got involved in it. First I lived over in Delwood, and I don't know what that house is. I remember paying $9,000 for it, but it's, I don't know what it's worth, but tremendous amount they pay. And I went around East Pine Valley, and that house is worth 
Have you gone back and, and traveled in any of the areas since, since uh, in the, that you served, even though I know you're on the, the ships, but um, to, uh, since you've been out? or? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, my wife and I up until recently, and we got a, my wife got to a point where she didn't like to fly. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, every uh, spring and fall, we take a trip somewhere. And of course, one of the things that I was attracted to was where I'd already been in the military. So we've covered France pretty well, and we've covered uh, Italy, uh, Sicily, North Africa. But this was something we were doing very regularly, and uh, up until you know very recently. <clears throat> Chance to, to go back. We went to, to a lot of places, yeah. yeah. And we went to all, we went to all over. The only place I really saw much of were the Pacific, of course, were places like where we had bases in the Pacific, you know, Shanghai, and mm -hmm. places like that. And we went China pretty completely, you know, mm -hmm. Japan. Now, I'm when you mention running into people, where have you just seen them, like in your travels, or people you served with, or? Uh, yeah, my memory doesn't say yeah. very well here. Right. But <laughs> you were pretty diverse. Yeah, people were from uh, scattered areas oh, that year. Yeah. Rather oh, than yeah, everywhere. Because uh, it, it, it was kind of a mixture. There were some units that might have been geographically some of the small ones, but in your situation, it was a. Uh, People had come from all over oh, for yeah, their training and and, um, and so forth. Um, we've got um, we do have some more time left, and I was going to see if there was anything in particular that um, that stories that stand out for you, or just any related experiences that uh, um, you know are are really outstanding that that. Maybe you haven't touched on or want to talk about in more detail, whether it's about your training or, or uh, you know, the actual experiences or the, or even some of your time that uh, that you had a chance to get in and and uh, on your off time and and uh, explore some of these places and uh, anything like that. Any of you? I can't recall. Let me see now. I really can't. Hold on, hold on. Was there particularly, um, you know, despite the circumstances, was there any place in particular that, that really struck you in terms of the different places you went that uh, was a favorite place or that you were drawn to? Or Well, of course, Hawaii. You know, uh -huh. Pearl Harbor. And, uh, Hawaii is a very attractive place, and I got, we, my wife and I have gotten there a good deal. Uh -huh. And I was able to get there once during the war. Uh -huh. and I can't even remember exactly. How that came about, but it was some kind of assignment. Of course, you always were trying to get it militarily. You were trying to get the assignment that had the most joy in it. Yes. <laughs> and that 
as I, uh, and that was a place that you sort of reached for. Yeah. yeah. And I think even in, in living life you've done the same thing. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Um, well, let's see. I was, I can't think really of anything else. I guess one more question. How did you hear about the, um, the project? The interviews, did you, did uh, you hear about it or did someone, the, the Veterans History Project? Veterans History Project. And the interviews we're doing here. Um, well, I just got this letter and I have a call. Okay, good. And uh, uh, you must have gotten that information of my being a veteran somewhere. Uh huh. And someone contacted you from here then? Yeah, this was the first contact that I had. Oh, okay. And, uh, Because um, it's been going on for about two years, and I know a lot of people we're talking to now are, you know, people have found out and and men mentioned it, um, mentioned it to them. How I, I, was, I think I just just got this letter. Uh -huh. Okay. But, but somehow you must have found out that I was a veteran. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Someone here probably got your name from from someone and um, yeah. and got in touch with you there. Okay. Well, I think. That pretty much wraps it up. I'm going to go ahead and sit. Because that's something that's very, mm -hmm. and I'm going to take the reason, if you don't mind me turning this on, mm -hmm. is that is something I've really learned a, yeah. a lot of. Deserve a lot of, for sticking it out. Mm -hmm. Because I said, we didn't have any of this. Mm -hmm. Everybody was 100% for what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine. Vietnam situation because it was just a real divided. And one of my one of my uh, one of my uh, son-in-laws fought in that, and it was just a totally different situation. And I know I've actually had a couple of comments from uh, from World War II veterans that were either in in highly charged areas or whatever that mm -hmm. said it's actually what made them shut down and not you know. Uh, made it difficult for them to talk about their experience because, like in the areas where they were, yeah. the rea the Vietnam reaction was yeah. was so tough. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Could you um, could you recall what your personal feelings were about entering the war? Like personally, did you uh, for the war? Did you what were your feelings about going to war? Did you? Well, of course, I was in there before the war started. Mm -hmm. okay. See, I was. I got my, not for any reason of, <clears throat> not for any reason of patriotism, but I had a very low, low draft number. Mm -hmm. And that was in 1940. And you had to do something. So I, and my mother was financially dependent on me. And uh, so, uh, no, I, I, I was already in the war when it hit. Mm -hmm. and when, when Pearl Harbor hit, I don't think as many people want to do anything to go ahead with it. And, uh, but no, I never had any feeling about it. But, but remember that I had a low draft number mm -hmm. uh, and not any patriotism. I had a low draft number, so I had to do something. Mm -hmm. So I got my commission, I had that in April or so of, uh, of uh, 41. And Pearl Harbor didn't hit until uh, January. That's when you mentioned your whole scenario changed yeah. in terms of the... Yeah what you were doing, the yeah. focus. Yeah. yeah. And uh, let's see, you had gotten married before you went to the Pacific. I and got married because I was okay. had the shore duty. And uh, my relief died. Mm -hmm. And uh, and as I say, then uh, I had to go on with the ship to Panama. And mm -hmm. that's where they Said they would have a relief for me, and I doubted it, and I was right. And uh, he took it all from, took it from there. And a total of how long were you gone when you were uh, left here, between the time you left and came back from the Pacific? After I got back from the Pacific? Yeah. Oh, that was only that was only a matter of just getting these guys that had uh -huh. all this big pay uh -huh. discharged. I guess that might have taken maybe four or five weeks, okay. something like that. Okay. And you got to realize this is a, a situation they made. The smart thing for them to do, and 
Well, we tried to coach him. I want us to get as much education uh -huh. as you can right now, as, as near your interests as you can. Okay. Uh, hadn't known anything else, like you said. This is, mm -hmm. It had been the only thing they, a lot of them had their first experience at well, all. No, the first civilian experience. Uh -huh. And they weren't in any hurry to get out at all, and I can understand that. Uh -huh. Wouldn't have been either, but there was this basket thing. I mean, this thing was waiting for them in terms of educational systems. Okay, well thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and